I know, I know. Stay with me. Please don't turn the video off. Hey fiddlers, welcome to today's Fiddle Focus video. Today we're gonna to be talking about phrasing and expressiveness. When you're playing a slow air or a waltz or just a pretty tune on the fiddle, you really want it to sing. The violin sounds a lot like the human voice and so we're going to talk today about bringing that into your playing. If you'd like sheet music and practice tracks for the tune that I'm going to be playing today, it's a slow air called Roslyn Castle, and there's a link in the description for those. All right, let's get started. Today we're gonna to be talking about phrasing mostly in the context of slow tunes. So things like slow airs, waltzes, slow reels, slow jigs, slow stuff. So there are three tools that we're gonna keep in mind as we think about phrasing and expressiveness. These are really good things to have in your toolkit. The first is dynamics, and I think this is the most important one. Dynamics are basically just how softly or loudly you are playing any particular part of the tune. Another one is vibrato. This can be a little controversial in the fiddling world, not gonna lie, but I do like to use vibrato in my slower tunes from time to time. You don't necessarily wanna put it everywhere, you could, but it can be used as well just sparingly to kind of emphasize certain parts of the tune. The third thing is something that I like to call breath. We kind of want to let these tunes breathe and part of how we do that is we just stop our bow. We just stop playing. Honestly, sometimes that's the best part of the tune. That silence, which kind of makes me wonder what I'm doing with my life. Okay, so those are the three tools we're gonna use. Let's see how they're going to apply to phrasing. I first just wanna say there's no one way to phrase or express a particular tune. This is very subjective. Even the same fiddler might take the same tune and make some points louder and some points softer, and then the next time through, completely change that up. All right, that being said, I think the first principle of phrasing for me is Follow your heart. Start by thinking about what emotions does this song remind me of? How does it make me feel? And how can I share that with others? I might even imagine what image does this tune bring to mind? Or what sort of story could I imagine that went along with it? When you start there, the phrasing and the expressiveness and all of that, a lot of that can really just fall into place. Having that emotion or image or story in mind just gives you a bit of a guide, like something you're aiming for when you divide the tune into phrases, use dynamics, use vibrato, and put little breaths and pauses in there. It's all there to support what you're trying to convey. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty and try dividing this tune into phrases. You might think of a phrase as one musical idea, one musical thought, and it has a sort of shape to it, sort of arc. So overall, you could almost think of the whole tune as a phrase. So let's start there, the broadest possible lens. And we're going to think, what's the highest point of the tune? What's sort of the the pinnacle. You might come to your own conclusions about that. Again, it's very subjective, but there is a part in the B part that I think of as just the most dramatic moment. Sometimes, honestly, the most dramatic part of the tune is just the highest note. So if that's the high point of our tune, we're sort of aiming for that the entire time we're playing the tune. We don't want another moment to necessarily outshine that moment or be louder or more dramatic. Okay, so now we might think of the tune in shorter phrases. Let's go to the A part and the B part. That's the first half of the tune and the second half of the tune. So let's start with the first half of the tune. We're gonna play it through and we're gonna see what's the high point there. shape to it, I would 
would say that last part is kind of, that's the high point. You might disagree with me, that's fine. We can agree to disagree. You're still my friend. I hope I'm still your friend. All right, so in the A part, that's the point we're gonna be aiming for. And now let's divide the A part into two parts. So we've got kind of the first line, that's four bars, and the second line, which is four bars. Let's go to the first line. So here's what we've got. Kind of a tricky one. Could it be or is it? I kind of feel like it's aiming for. So let's make that the high point of the first four bars of the tune. Okay, so we're gonna get even smaller. We're gonna break that first line of the tune, those four bars, into two bar phrases. So here is the first two bar phrase. So that's one musical thought. This would be the next one. Can you hear how those are sort of distinct thoughts, distinct ideas? And each one of them has its own shape. So if we follow the shape of the first one, let's find the high point of that one. I think that note is sort of where that phrase is aiming. All right, so we went from the whole tune to half of the tune to one line to two bars. And often that's a really helpful way to break down a fiddle tune. Fiddle tunes have a general structure to them usually. They have that first half, second half. They very often have 16 bars total. And often they go in those little chunks, two bars, two bars, two bars, two bars. Okay, now let's take our three tools we thought about earlier. So we've got dynamics, vibrato, and breath. And we're just gonna look at the first phrase of that tune. So we might start out nice and soft. Have a little swell right here in the dynamics and then soften again leading into this note, which is gonna be the loudest, and then die away. So dynamically we're going. All right, so now we've got the dynamic shape of that phrase. The next thing we're gonna do is think about, do we wanna add vibrato? Again, completely optional, but if you wanted to, you could give a little vibrato to the high point of that section just to sort of highlight it a little bit more. So you're getting... So just that little wiggle. Not to say that you can't use vibrato on a quiet part, but it also can be just a nice way to add a little oomph to a note that needs some oomph. The last thing is breath. Often you wanna have, in a slow tune in particular, a little bit of a lift in your bow or a little bit of a silence in between phrases. It's almost like you're singing it and you're giving yourself a moment to breathe. So this is how that might work in the A part of the tune. in the tune doesn't really mean doing anything to the tempo necessarily. You're not necessarily gonna slow the tune down there, you're just going to stop your bow or maybe even lift your bow a smidgen. I think as audience members, we really want to hear those moments of breath. The violin is so close to the human voice, so it feels like we're hearing someone sing, and if it just keeps going without any pauses, we're kind of like starting to get worried, like, oh my gosh, they've gotta breathe. <laughs> So 
concluding thought I'd like to leave you with is try singing your tunes. I know, I know, stay with me, please don't turn the video off. Singing your tune can really help you find the shape of the tune, what are the high points, and then also what are the moments where you want that little space to breathe. If I sing this tune, I pretty naturally figure out, okay, that's the moment I want to highlight. La, 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 la. My voice is a little hoarse today, but you get the picture. All right, folks, that does it for today's fiddle focus video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you'd like cheat music and practice tracks for Rosalind Castle, you will find a link for that in the description. You'll also find a link for fiddle tunes of all kinds. Happy fiddling, everyone, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next one.